those in attendance. Thank you. The month is November 5th, 2019. Any public comments? Come in and expound on what you have to talk about. I'll give you three minutes. State your name and address. I see there's none. Going back to 530 study session, SS-1, U.S. Census Bureau, Ms. Alvarez. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Today we have uh, Barbara Martin, who is a partner specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau, and she's going to be presenting to you guys um, in regards to the upcoming 2020 census. Okay. So here she is. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Just found out we're practically related. <laughs> Portuguese thing, I guess. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this time to speak to you. Nathan's heard all this already, so I, I beg his forgiveness for the repeat. Um, but we are an important mission uh, with the United States Census Bureau and getting word out there for participation. Um, I am from Lemoore. I um, uh, really honestly never thought much about the census ever before taking this position. Um, I have a farm with my family. We fill out tons of USDA forms. We fill out, you know, and so I guess it was just one of those things that I, I must have done. I don't even, I don't remember getting called about it, but it was a problem here in the Central Valley because the Central Valley was a, a statistic in my training and that statistic was under count. And, um, and we'll find out how devastating another 10 years of undercount will be for our, for our communities. So I thank you for allotting me this time. And, and um, you know, we, we, we need to work together in, in, in educating our communities and, and why, why the census is important. You know, it's the law. Um, there's no way in for I really enforcement in place. So if you don't fill out the census, you know, you're really not going to go to jail, but it is a law. Um, it's our civic duty, but um, it, most importantly, it's $675 billion, billion with a B, that's distributed by the census data. So um, that's a big chunk of money, which, you know, there's different, different ways around it, but basically $2,000 a person. Um, so if that's not counted, that's $2,000 a person we don't get for our communities. Um, you know, it, it's redistricting, it's our political voice. Um, so it's pretty important. And um, now that I've learned it about it, I, I'm passionate about it and how we can get our communities um, to participate. Um, there's key dates. So we're not right now. We're just opened our field office. So we have a field office in Fresno and we have uh, also one in Bakersfield. Um, those are our closest ones. Um, I don't work directly out of those. I work from my home um, and, and um, do all of our planning and, and uh, corresponding through there. Though my official, my official office is Los Angeles. Um, we also are now advertising um, for recruitment. We need we need employees, and um, we're having a hard time filling many of those positions. Um, census day is April first, so that's the big day, and we're in preparation for that. This is the first time ever in the 200 years of the census that it will be online. So March 12th, they will be sending an invitation to respond where people can go on, on the internet and actually fill out theirs and there'll be a barcode. They will have um, um, also the traditional forms, phone and paper form that they can do as well. They will be sending five notices, postcards, letters for that urging to response. We want self-response. It saves taxpayer dollars. Um, it saves us from sending people out to knock on the doors and collecting those by hand. I also think that if we encourage the self-response, it gives somewhat of that, and nobody likes someone coming to your door and, and filling out um, information. Um, there, there are now address canvassers that are finishing up their job where they're actually 
corresponding because nothing is sent to PO boxes. Everything is sent directly to the physical address. So I actually living in the island had um, a young girl from Bakersfield knock at my door. Hello, I'm from the Census Bureau. And I'm like, wow, I'm from the Census Bureau too. Um, and she had a question. I have four mobile homes on our property and wanted to know their address. Well, their address is my address and then they just pick up their mail. So we just were now I was able to clarify labeling that A, B, C, and D. We have a lot of that in our outlying areas, a lot of communities, a lot of properties that have these mobile homes without addresses. Um, they are not asking any personal questions at this time. So there's already been fraud um, attempted. People, you know, saying they're from the Census Bureau and trying to obtain information. The only thing they're asking right now would be addresses. Is that is that building vacant? Is there someone living there? Um, but they would be not asking any other questions than, than of the property they're inquiring about. <clears throat> so getting back to that, our, um, all of the answers are protected by Title 13. Um, as a, as a um, employee of the U.S. Census Bureau, I've taken an oath, um, which that oath is for uh, life. So it doesn't end at the end of my uh, tour of duty, which is in next September, but it is for life that I promise to never disclose me, and that is every census employee. Um, but in, this is our real problem, it, especially these day and age, is this, this protection. People are just not secure in knowing that their data is secure. They think there's some ulterior motive. There's been some politics in in what's going on. So this is our biggest hurdle, I think, is, is this um, protection um, and people's information. Um, we're trying to comfort in so many languages. So all of the information, everything is going to be equally in English and Spanish. We have 12 non-English languages, so they can go online, self-respond in the 12 non-English languages. And then there are items in 59 other languages that are available to help them to respond. Um, and actually enumerators, if they have to go on non-response follow-ups, they will actually have a glossary cards and where they can kind of point what for their, for their language um, that they prefer. So we're really working on, on developing more and more languages um, to try to, um, um, you know, make people feel as comfortable as possible in their language. We also have hired a lot of partnership specialists like myself in that serve in many different languages and communities. Um, I'm serving Kings. There's also another Kings County, um, and she is a Spanish specialist. And then we, if I have a request for something in Farsi or some other language, I can, I have tools to, I can reach out for them, to them and, and come speak, which is, which is nice. They've really realized in the Central Valley, the, the undercount that we've had, California uh, Complete Count Committee has, has put, you know, millions of dollars into rectifying that. They realized the loss that California had by not counting or being counted in the census. I mentioned census jobs. We are right at the end of our recruitment uh, um, week, um, and we are now at the point where we are considering hiring non-U.S. citizens, um, and and because that was the job requirement, but we are having a hard time filling all of the positions needed. So we are urging um, people to go online, fill out the application. My daughter received a call back. It's perfect. She's a mom of three little ones and a little part-time job. She can set her own schedule. Um, so we're urging anyone that might be considering job. My, my cousin in Arizona was just retired and he's going to be starting in January working for the census um, during this time. It's good pay um, starting at like sixteen fifty, and it goes up from there. So um, it's as easy as that. Go online, access the 2020 census job site and, um, and hopefully fill those jobs. So complete count committees, I mentioned California has a complete count committee. That 
complete count committee has distributed funds um, and Kings County is uh, the recipient of uh, some of those funds. You're being very rep well represented with Nathan there in the, on the meetings. Um, and not just because I'm from Kings County, I'm particularly proud of uh, Kings County Complete Count Committee and how they've what they've done, um, getting the most bang for their bucks. Um, they're working with Proteus, um, and they've refitted uh, um, two of their mobile units, um, knowing that going out to service the outlying areas, which are typically the most undercounted, um, being a trusted name within the community, and um, having, I believe it's 11 or 12 um, computer terminals in the mobile station. So encouraging people to go online and there we're now in the process of obtaining the verbiage in which the helpers on these uh, mobile units can assist um, with, because generally enumerators, census enumerators are the only ones allowed to ask those questions to ease them through it. So we're working through that. We know that this is going to be a very useful tool. Um, as a matter of fact, Bakersfield Complete Count Committee is just trying to figure out how they can steal a, um, one of the units to go over there once in a while, especially going out to some of the far farm um, com farming communities and where they don't have great internet. So um, the King's Count uh, Committee is doing a great job, and I think that they've got um, a great idea happening. And again, it's going to take work, you know, work to, you know, finding out those hard to count communities and, and getting them out there, inviting us to events, inviting Proteus out to events to, um, to encourage this. So again, forming the CCCs, you know, targeting schools, targeting, um, you know, those those people that distribute benefits. They're the ones receiving the money. Ironically, the ones that um, are most afraid to participate in the census are the ones utilizing the services, the monies that they receive. But I, I really think that schools um, are such a trusted, I, I've been working a lot with the Tulare County Office of Education and, and working with them on their staff development days, making awareness for the teachers. And, and because if they're not on board, if we don't make them feel secure, then then you know it's often if they're not secure with the census, then they're not going to be able to share it with their people to participate and say yes, this is a safe. It, your answers are protected. It's not about immigration. I get that question all the time. The question's not on there, but the fear of the of that their information going to you know I, I had one lady at my last meeting she says well you know President Trump is going to take those numbers and he's going to figure out who are not citizens and he's going to roll us put us all together and ship us out this is this is a real fear I mean we we know that's not true I my my own um, employee on our farm you know she she is she's secure with the census because I'm a trusted face in her life, but she said, no, I hear that Trump's going to take us away then, you know, and it's about the data. It's not about, you know, and someone said, well, why was the question going to be on there anyway? What is it? What's the big deal about citizenship? Well, I, I mean, I understand why some people would be afraid to answer that citizenship question, especially in our climate today. But I also said, you know, it's a great source to get civic dollars for pathways to citizenship. So now we can't, so if there's a high area of um, non-citizens in, in an area, wouldn't that be a great place for funds to go to incorporate, you know, pathway to citizenship and have funding for that? Those classes aren't free. Cit to obtain citizenship isn't free. But if there's a big area of it, maybe there could have been dollars allotted for that. Someone was upset because they asked, well, why, what does it matter if we rent or own? You know, if we... Why is that question on there? I said, well, that question's on there because if there's a high area of rental units, that might be a great place to make funds for first-time buyers. We need to know the makeup of the communities and where the need is. If they don't know the need, how do they know that the, you know what money needs to go where? And if they're not counted, we're not going to get that money at all. That's why we have waiting lists for Head Start in Kings County. 
you know, no matter what your climate, what your makeup is of your community, this is the most important step we can give them, head start. And if that money's not going here, it's going somewhere else. So if this is a basic makeup. It looks very close to the Kings County uh, Complete Count Committee, you know, where you have, um, you know, a designated chair, which is Greg uh, Gatska and um, Curia Martinez um, from the planning department. Um, you have uh, representatives from faith-based organizations, schools. Um, I, I'm not sure if you guys have a tribal member um, on there, but um, those are generally included. And we do even have their own tribal specialist. So Tachi is actually assigned a tribal specialist. Um, and so those key people that know, um, you know, where where the needs are, the ones receiving the money. I'm working with um, uh, Nanette from uh, King's um, United Way. Um, I'm put on a team lead for um, group quarters, which include homel homeless encampments and trying to find those key people so we can do a point in time. Um, you know, I, I joke, which is, it's not a joke, but, you know, I said San Francisco and L.A. get, you know, lots of money for their homeless, and yet they still ship them to us, and they don't send the money with them. But we still have the need to take care of our homeless community and, and ways to try to help this problem. So um, I am on that team lead, which I'm happy to do, and, and um, hopefully, you know, that the money for HUD all goes through um, these the census data. We also have another real issue that's become more and more of a problem of point in time counts. Um, no city wants to have a high number of homeless on their on their record. You know that 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 causes its own problem, right? Businesses don't want to come in. There was a high high number of homeless. But in, in the meantime, we have to find a, a nice, uh, nice balance because we need to get them counted, um, and 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 so we can get those dollars to assist them. So again, identifying the hard to count communities, um, those populations, those pockets, um, and working with these uh, committees to the best way to reach them. You know, in the cities, a utility bill with the census is coming and that information, that's a great way to do it. But, you know, when you have these outlying areas where you have um, more, um, you know, language needs, things like that, they have to have those trusted faces um, to reach out to them. Churches are another great way uh, to reach out. So this is kind of hard to see, and especially on that, but I urge you to, when you have a minute, and I know that's probably impossible, but um, this uh, Response Outreach Area Mapper, Rome, is a public map, mapping application that you go on through the census website. And um, you could just put in your, um, you know, zip code, and it takes you to this. And, and all of that there, it, it lists, you know, the population breakdown, the, you know, the, the, the economic breakdown, graduates, lots of really great information about your communities are there. And you can even scroll down and, and it's all there. Lamore itself is not particularly a hard to count area. I mean, they had a good response from the city, but you can see that uh, all of the dark blue, that around it, that is all hard to count, um, low response scores. So those are five-year estimates. So I urge you, you know, you could plug in different census tracts and, and they're broken down even in blocks. So you can, um, and I know Kings County, a uh, complete count committee's already broken down that for Kings County, but you can go on there. It's a real easy site to use. It's great for, you know, I urge people that are thinking about businesses and that to use these public mapping. This is part of all census data. It's also, I mean, uh, people use it also for the census data for um, heritage, you know, for genealogy research and things like that. So there's lots of fun stuff um, to poke around if you like data like myself. Um, so as a partnership, how can I help? Well, I'm I'm here talking to you, urging you trusted people of the city of Lemoore um, to help me um, 
recognizing events. Um, I've done a few. I did ro the last Rock the Arbor. Um, any, I've got to the Tachi Community Breakfast, um, Chamber, getting involved. I'm going to coffee with KCFB. Um, I'm hoping by the time um, Census Day comes, you'll be very sick of me. Um, but I, I, I want you to please help me to get the words out. Um, if there's an area that we need to look into or a contact that you have for a certain area, I would be that person that you would contact. Um, so um, also promoting census jobs. Um, I'm working with West Hills, I'm trying to get um, the word out there, especially it's a good college jobs. So. Um, Hopefully we'll have a relationship between now and uh, Census 2020, and I hope that we have a great count um, and we're not undercounted like we were 10 years ago. So uh, just to generate the community's readiness, um, working with the Complete Count Committee that's already established, um, inviting me to, to network and to meetings and um, helping us recruit for diverse staff. And that's my information. And Marissa knows how to get a hold of me, and Nathan does too. So I don't know if you have any questions. I have a question, if I may. Sure. Uh, what is the age limit for employment? 18. So you have a minimum age of 18. Um, okay. And when they were talking about this with the county, I imagine they did, but and probably, hopefully, they came out with some kind of ad plan or something. But I mean, as a municipality, I mean, we have a website. We can vote on our website. Is there any other ideas that came down, any innovative ways? I mean, are, are they going to put this also on the Hanford Sentinel? You know, um, are they going to use, you know, I mean, I think I've seen one ad on TV mm -hmm. about the census. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that was just another question, you know, ideas, you know, uh, getting the word out. Uh, you know, idea, you got the breakfast Friday mornings over the American Legion, mm -hmm. which you said Lamore is pretty well covered, you know. Right. But, um, you know, and then uh, you talked about the, you know, the Indian, you know, the, the, the reservation, but what are you doing for military installations? So those, that would be considered um, that group quarters. So they have their own special counting for them as well. So okay. they, they have their own special enumeration. Um, that's done that's, at a different level. Yeah, that's oh. done at a different level. But, you know, again, it, it's, it, it, you can never get the word out. It's, you know, like they say, it's 14 touches. It's not just a one and done. It's, you know, I, I, you, know I, you just don't show up at one thing. And I, but so mm -hmm. all of those things that you said, getting it on the websites, you know, advertising, um, you know, um, school, city functions, you know. Um, no, the advertising, I mean, that's federal dollars is paying for that. Of yeah, course, and that'll local, be, that'll come, yes. Yeah, so that'll come from through you. Yeah. Well, we don't, so we have no money. <laughs> so the federal oh, okay. government has no money for, so how it works. Situation normal. <laughs> yes, You said yes. you had 2000 dollars per person so you must have money <laughs> I know. well it goes back into those uh federal uh, funds but yeah. as far as promotion i mean we have um i guess I, I, that's you know part of what we do but we really our job is to look for resources so set the, the city that would put the uh, census for you know logo and information on, on their websites. websites we're looking for partners like that King's, um, the complete count committees received money, but that money was from the California complete count committee because the governor realized that, you know, this undercount in right. the Central Valley. Um, Ten years ago, King's County did not have a complete count committee. No, I, I think they've done a good job. They've done what a they, really well, they, good job. Know, I take my hat off to them. They, they, I yes. think they're being aggressive. Yes, yeah. and and so and then to Larry, you know, it's funny because I see um, everyone's a little bit different. So to Larry has um, a, also a complete count committee, and um, they're doing they're offering it through a bunch of mini grants. Um, one of the uh, Rooks, um, which is a, a promoter, so they they were in charge of the farm worker festival, the Michi Fest. So their their partnership was. Um, on all of their posters, their t-shirts that they sold with a census logo. Um, they've created a know your uh, 
census cards, which were similar to those know your right cards with mm, when the, right. they had the immigration information. And those are going over very well in Tulare. Um, so, um, you know, posters, encouraging businesses to have posters, um, setting up, um, you know, um, libraries in the I, at Kings County libraries are are on it. I'm very, very excited that they, you know, they're and they're trying to work out some funding where they're open maybe on a Sunday where families can go in and respond. Other so having, I made too is, is, you know, just get a list of all the nonprofits, call them up and just say, hey, can I come talk in front of your group? Mm -hmm, yes. Because they have a lot of nonprofits in Kings County, especially in the Lemoore area. Right. The Kings County, I mean, they're very active. Yes. So, I mean, they can just by word of mouth. The other question is, is you said it starts April 1st. When does it end? So April 1st is the official day. So April 1st kickoff. is this. It, so March 12th, they'll start sending out the um, invitations mm -hmm. to respond. But it's for a snapshot of April 1st. So say March 12th, um, you know, they get their invitation. And the next right. day there's a, a, a baby. Well, that baby needs to be counted. Yeah, of course, up until April 1st, but say that baby, so you can respond up until the end of July. Okay. But then if the baby was born in, in June, mm -hmm. that you wouldn't count the baby. Mm -hmm. Got it. So it's a snapshot of April 1st. Yes. Um, I'm sure that this is a pointless question, but when I worked in uh, Bravo five at Pleasant Valley prison, I received a census questionnaire asking how many people live in your house and I had 198 inmates that lived in the house with me so I uh, obviously didn't fill it out well I, I can't remember what I did with it I, I was just curious do you do you count the prisons because you have five in Kings County alone right there and they have they have a special enumeration hmm. as well so I mean and that that's what I, I know for coming up They're they're handling that's all part of that group quarters um, enumeration so because i mean to me it seems you know the prisons see me they're they're captive audience you know and the records are there so um well the only, the only reason that made me ask is because I, I received that letter i didn't know if you sent one of those to every housing unit or if that's how you received your data from the prisons because i was going to say it's so and yeah. you received that at i received it in the housing unit as if just a regular piece of mail off of the street and it was addressed to nobody just to my housing unit. To your housing unit at the prison. Mm -hmm. I will find out. I do not have an answer <laughs> for that. That's I, pretty I, it interesting. It was kind of funny because, I mean, it felt like it was something that was supposed to be going to like a resident. Right. And it went to a housing unit of 200 inmates. And yeah. I will write that down. That I might ask you. That March 12th, April <laughs> thing at time. Okay. Right. It, yeah. No, but it, the prisons are, 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 are are supposed to have a, a special enumeration like the, um, like the, naval bases. And, and I was also going to offer, uh, you know, if people have a problem with the way you're asking the question or the question itself, maybe there's a, another way of asking it without, like, instead of asking someone, are you a citizen? You could ask something like, would you like to be a citizen? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, put in a box up there. If you already check here, I don't know. It's just, is I know that a lot of people, once you, once you put them on the defense, they're there, right. and they're going to stay there. What's really ironic is that that quest so the and the question is not going to be on there at all now, but um, that there the those non citizens receiving benefits are asked that question. Yeah, it's on every benefit they they mm -hmm. have that question and it's not they they don't treat it offensive as there. So there was the, the politics in there was kind of um, it was I think that. They would have just answered it probably, but then there was another, another underlying group that didn't want that because yeah. again, you have it's it's also redistricting and reapportionment. So, you know, unfortunately, there's there's the politics when it's just strictly we want the data, and we I I I mean, as far as you know, 
it was on like in 1950s, that question was on there. Yeah. So it, it wasn't like it was the first time ever it was asked. So yeah, I, I was just, I was just trying to think outside the box a little. So. Yeah, but that is Yeah. And that would be a great question. Because I, I think that there would be so many answers to yes. You yeah. know, so even if you mm -hmm. ask the question, would you like to be a citizen? I think that would be an, an, and again, and to have funding to make that happen, you know, that because that whole process is very broken. You know, it, 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 there's people that have been trying for 20 years to get citizenships and there's bad players and, and lawyers that were supposed to be representing them that just took their money. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and the census isn't going to fix that. But if we can, you know, allocate funds to help people on that path, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anything you. else? I have a, a question. Uh, sure. On the last, uh, well, 10 years ago when the last census happened, uh, the questions went, um, some some homes received packets of questions, multiple questions, uh, you know, have an air conditioner, you got a refrigerator. Okay. Mm -hmm. And other people yeah. just got a short survey, how many people live in the home? You own your own, you know, you rent how many people? Uh, so uh, did did they make it all a short survey and did the American Community Survey or, uh, yeah, American right. Community Survey, so that's a did whole that take different care of all survey. the big, big questions and packets? Are we so going to get American, No. So the American Community Surveys will continue to go out like they normally do to those selected households. The census is once every 10 years and that is only 10 questions. Ten questions. So that's it. And of course, and so basically 10 minutes for 10 questions, but the larger the household, the longer it takes so to fill it out. So if the person doesn't answer all 10 questions, then they're going to get a tap on the door? They could, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's all I have. Okay, great. Anybody else? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank for you. your time. Thank you. And I'll find out about that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're going into closed session. Congress with Labor Negotiated Government Code Section 54957.6. Agency Designated Representative Mary Lanier, City Attorney Michelle Spears, Assistant City Manager. Employee Organization, Lamore Police Department, Professional Service. Two, Congress with Legal Counsel, Anticipated Litigations, Government Code Section 54956.9. Significant exposure of litigations pursuant to paragraphs two or three of subdivision D of section 54956.9, one case. Two cases. Two cases now. Oh. Two cases. Three, conference with real property negotiator, government code section 54956.8. Property APN 020-083-008-000. Agencies negotiator, Nathan Olson, city manager, negotiation parties, Lamore District Chamber of Commerce, under negotiation price and terms. Time is now 6.04, adjourned to 7.30. See you guys back regular meeting, 7.30. On C Street, Lamore, California. The month is November. 5th, 2019. Please silence all electronic devices of those in attendance. Thank you. Any public comment? Want to come up, state your name, address, where you're from, to the podium, give you three minutes. Invocation. Didn't expect the first one. <laughs> My name's Carolyn Key. I live at 330 Champion Street. Hold on, hold, hold on just a minute. Okay. Yeah. I just skipped over something. Yeah, oh. it's not quite public. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I got I got two agendas on. Invocation, Pastor Ash. I'm trying to get through the prayer. Will everybody stand? After you stand, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment of prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, Father, many with heavy hearts, Father, Lord, and we lift up the Diaz and Rogers families, Father. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you in advance for the tremendous work of comfort that can only be done through your Holy Spirit, Father. We pray that it has begun and that it will continue, Father. We lift up all family members and loved ones, Father, that are hurting right now, feeling the losses. We are feeling the loss today, missing our brother Rogers, that is normally here at every single one of these meetings, Father. Lord, we pray for... a just a mighty blessing upon their families, Lord. And we thank you because of faith in you, Father, faith in your son, Jesus Christ, that you have brought your sons home to you, that you have brought them home to heaven, Father. And we pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, there is something that needs to take place tonight, Father, something important, a meeting tonight, Father, a meeting of minds and hearts, Father, for your will to be done with the city of Lamor, for this great city, Father. So, Lord, I pray for an anointing tonight upon the team that is in front of me, Father, to be used by you, Father, to direct these affairs and we pray ultimately for your will to be done and we pray all these things in the mighty name of jesus christ our lord and savior and all god's people said amen amen please remain standing for the pledge of allegiance thank you pastor i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all Everybody be seated. <laughs> Roll call, Ms. Marissa. Good evening. Council Member Brown? Here. Council Member Lyons? Here. Council Member Scaldi? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Plord? Here. Mayor Neal? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Closed session report out? Nothing to report, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Agenda approval additions in or deletions, are there any? I see there's none. Let's try this again. Public comment? <laughs> Hi, my name is Carolyn Keith. I live at 330 Champion Street. Um, I wanted to present this to you guys to get on a... Uh, on the agenda, uh, pre or not previously, in the future, uh, there's a group of people. I know you had a bad experience with cat people before, but this one is Kings County TNR program. TNR stands for Trap, Neuter, and Return. We want to fix them so that we don't have an over more over abundance of what we have now. And if you don't don't know what TNR is, I brought some pamphlets here for you guys Thank for you. to read. We um, Proposed doing the TNR. I already have cards and stuff out to the feed companies because the feed stores and stuff um, Because I've had a interest in feral cats for um, Barn cats for mice and rats and stuff. So um, we had our first meeting. We've got about 30 volunteers <coughs> I didn't tell any of them about this meeting that I was coming because I didn't want you to have it clear out to the front door so if you'd take into consideration putting us on the agenda, I would appreciate it. Okay. Pass it on to our city manager. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all? Thank you. Okay. Amy Ward. All right, Amy Ward, presidency of Lamore Chamber of Commerce. First, I apologize for my attire. We've been running around all day. Um, before I get started, I did want to offer um, my sincere condolences to the Rogers family and to the Diaz family. Um, we all know Ed was like a father to me, so I um, miss him here tonight. And um, to Officer Diaz's family, um, we love you all. Um, I do have some good news um, for, I believe, what is the first time ever. Uh, uh, Myself, uh, I was asked recently to join the board for the Kings County Economic Development Corporation. So I now sit on the board of directors. This is something that has never happened that we can find um, between the chamber and the EDC. So um, I think it speaks volumes to what the city, um, the EDC and the chamber are trying to do 
as, as building that teamwork and, and coming together and sharing resources. So I was very honored that I was asked and nominated and selected to sit on that. So more I'm sure to come. Um, but for now, I think it, it, it speaks to us heading in the right direction. And I'm pretty proud of that. So um, next Wednesday at Tachi, we will be hosting our monthly luncheon. Our guest speaker is someone we might know. He's like a city manager or something. Um, so he'll be briefing uh, the chamber members on what's going on at the city. So we're really excited about that. We also have our holiday stroll coming up and our Christmas parade. So if you guys need more information, let me know. We hope you guys will be a part of it. Um, I know the, the city holds, holds a booth and different things out there. So we look forward to a, a great holiday season. Um, and if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. I have a question. Shoot. Uh, just for everyone else that doesn't know, what are the dates of the holiday stroll and the Christmas parade? The holiday... <laughs> <laughs> the holiday stroll is going to be November 23rd, and that will be in downtown um, on D Street, and it will be from 3 to 7. The Christmas parade is on December 7th, and that'll start at 6 p.m. This year for the Christmas parade, we're actually um, bringing in a third trailer MC surround our music system um, so that we can extend the parade route down Hill Street and wrap it around. We'll also bring in, be bringing in additional lighting and things like that because D Street is getting pretty congested. Unfortunately, D Street, we can't go any farther down D Street. So what we're going to try to do is wrap where we normally have the... the um, uh, parade floats exit. We're going to wrap it around that way, bring in more lighting, bring in more stuff so that hopefully people will, will sit on that side as well. Okay. Just uh, to ease the congestion. Question real quick on the holiday stroll. Yes. Um, Cause I know in the past they, they haven't, sometimes you left the street open, the street was left open and, and that's kind of hazardous. Are we looking at closing D street for D the holiday street? D street will be closed from Fox to Smart. Follett. Okay. Um, and for one, for safety reasons, obviously right. it gets really congested and it's really quite dangerous. Um, yeah. But we're also bringing in vendors. We have, I believe over 20 vendors this year. Perfect. Um, and we will also, what I'm really, really excited about, um, we, because we did partner with the city for this event, um, we are also doing for the first time ever, a Christmas tree um, scavenger hunt. So, about 20 businesses in downtown signed up to decorate Christmas trees within their business and then house them there. Participants will get the opportunity to come and grab a check-in sheet. If they go into each and every business and get it signed off, they have an opportunity to win the trees. Because one of the complaints that we heard in previous years was that not everybody was going into some of the stores. So um, in doing this, it's kind of a forced participation. Go in, check out, see what they've got, take them you know, through your store um, so that we get more participation within the event. So forced participation. It is forced participation. <laughs> Who doesn't want to win something for free? So, um, and, and you know, and kind of it, what's great about this is there's businesses that will be open this year that haven't been opened in previous years and they're doing it because of this, because they know they will get people that will come in for that kind of stuff, so. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Any more public comment? Okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, Martin Lewis, 829 Newcastle Street. Um, I have a brief safety concern. I think a traffic study should be conducted at East Bush and East D Street for the new housing development that is going in. We are partially halfway completed. Mm -hmm. So there's about another 30 homes to be built there. We're having issues with our children trying to cross the street uh, to get to the school, mm -hmm. get to the high school. We're also having trouble leaving the subdivision in the morning for work. There's times to where we sit there for up to five minutes waiting for traffic to clear. Um, my main concern is for the children. I believe the developer, by the time the development is completed, will have paid $1.8 in impact fees. So suggesting that impact fees be used to migrate the situation and conduct a study and put in some type of enhanced pedestrian automated uh, crosswalks for our children to cross the street to get to school and home safely. Um, traffic is just bearing around the curves. There is no speed limit signs until you get closer to the Moore Avenue. Uh, there's times cars are flying through there 50, 60 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, we're gonna have an incident, either a car wreck or a child getting hit by a vehicle. Um, something I don't wanna see, so I figured I'd bring it up to your guys' attention, and, and is there any possible way we can get the railroad to do something with the weeds behind our development? We've had three fires in the last within five months, and they're getting pretty close to our newly homes. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Public comment? 
See there's none, we're moving on to ceremony and presentations. I see there's none. Department of City Manager report, 2-1. City Manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. We'll start out tonight with Mr. Frank Rivera. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of things to update you on. Um, uh, you'll be invited to our groundbreaking ceremony for our uh, TTHM project, which is our water treatment plants, which are which are going to um, be under construction as of next week. Uh, I think the date is scheduled for November 19th, about one o'clock, but you will be receiving uh, invitations uh, to attend. We, we feel it's gonna be a pretty good turnout. Uh, what was so, that date? Pardon? 19. 19? Yes, the 19th. Um, Is that on a Wednesday or Thursday, Friday? 19th. I don't have my phone. Everybody right. looks at their camera. Yeah, I have my phone. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, it's a council. It's a Tuesday. 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 Okay. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Okay. Um, the other uh, thing is that uh, uh, today the building division um, actually went online with a building web page. So now the uh, contractor developer will have the ability to be able to um, go online and request their inspections uh, via, once they have a permit. Um, and then they can also uh, view their inspection results. So um, that went online today. So again, we'll, we'll, I'm sure there'll be some things that we need to tweak, but I just want to let you know that's a new feature that we added to the, uh, the bill and division uh, department. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Commander Kendall. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members. Uh, two things to report out. Um, the Miles for Giles uh, Memorial Run will be this Saturday at uh, Veterans Park. Uh, registration begins at 7 a.m. <coughs> and then the Veterans Parade on the 11th uh, will start at 6. Thank you. Okay, just a couple updates from me. Um, not sure if people are aware of it, but we had the college campus and charter school lockdown early this morning. Um, I was real proud of the response. It started out for me. I was uh, got a text from my daughter or a call, Daddy, we're on lockdown. So immediately my wife went into a frenzy and was upset. So, but uh, happy to report that suspect was in custody within probably 20 minutes of that phone call from my daughter on the scene. And uh, without a hitch, the school did send out the automated message that our uh, police department did set up a perimeter on the college campus and secured it, kept it safe for the kids. The individual never got within, never got within range of the campus. So um, good job by our, our PD as usual in conjunction with the sheriff's office for locating the suspect via cell phone via cell phone um that's one thing a couple other items it's been mentioned already but uh this weekend most people know we we lost one of our planning commissioners uh, mr ed rogers who frequents here um so uh, that was the start of our weekend and then obviously we lost one of our officers officer jonathan diaz so um just after this, I'd like to take a quick moment of silence before we move on to the consent calendar to, to honor those two. Um, but with that, we had already flown a position for the Planning Commission because Ron Mead's up for re-election. Um, unfortunately, due to the passing of Mr. Rogers, we now have a second vacancy we'll be recruiting for. So, uh, you know, we try to get that out. So anybody that wants to participate and help out and be, be involved in the city um, has that opportunity. So those those are, are on online if you're are interested. Um, the last thing about our, our unfortunate weekend was the, the community coming together. Um, I was at the PD and got to see people off duty coming in to support one another. Um, they're a family and uh, the community backs this department 100%. So um, even though it's a somber time, um, it just shows the strength of the community that we uh, we have in our, our law enforcement. So um, if there's anything good that can come of it, it, it was nice to see that. So um, with that, I'd like to go into a moment of silence to honor those that passed this weekend and then we'll hit the consent count.
Herzen. Okay, going on to the consent calendar section three. Three dash one approval minutes, regular meeting, October 15, 2019. Three dash two approval real property lease agreement, City of Lamore and Lamore District Chamber. Three dash three approval disposition of agencies properties listed as APN 024 slash 080 slash 068. 23 acres and APN 024 slash 080 slash 070. 12 acres to six Sigra LLC for the amount of $875,000. 3 4 approval agreement between the city of Lamore and RWG Law of Special Counsel. Service for Finance Matters. 3-5, Approval Bid, Award Weed Embatement Service. 3-6, Approval Agreement with Loomis and Armor Transport. 3-7, Approval Notice of Completion CIP 5700 slash Finance Department Remodeling Additions. 3-8, approval release of liability of amendment agreement with Coker Ellsworth. Coker Ellsworth. 3-9, approval budget fund, 020, traffic safety. I'm open to the public. Do they want to pull any of these items? Any council. Ask council if they want to. Okay, I'm bringing it back to the council. Council want to pull any of these items? Pull oh, 3-4. 3-4. Okay, 3-4 has been pulled. Do we want to pull everything except 3-4? No, you you wouldn't be pulling everything. A member I of the mean, public wanted to pull 3-4. If any members of the council have any item they would like to pull, um, otherwise you can take a, ask for a motion and a second on um, everything but 3-4. Do you guys want to expound council on 3- uh, on the consent calendar or do you want to make a motion? I'll make, make a motion. I'll make a motion. Please. I got a motion by Mr. Plewart. I will move that we approve the consent calendar with the exception of 3-4. Second. By second by Mr. Brown. Mr. Plewart. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Lyons. Aye. Mr. Scotty. Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. 3-4. Okay, I want to go back and discuss 3-4. Come up. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, this agreement between the City of Lamore and RWG Law is um, just an opportunity for the City to enter into an agreement with an additional law firm for matters related to financial matters. Um, this came up as a result of a discussion that happened between myself and the City Attorney regarding another issue that had come before Council. Um, and at the recommendation of the city attorney, it was recommended that we seek um, an additional agreement with a law firm that specializes in finance managers for municipalities. There is not an increase to the budget. Um, this is just here as a formality so that in the event that another item comes before council that would require review by an attorney specific to finance matters, that's just another firm that we can use. They would be used instead of Lozano Smith. Um, and so the existing budgets for financial matters would stay as they are. <coughs> Any questions by the council? Any questions by the council? But our ex existing city attorney would still review those documents, correct? Correct. Yes, this should, the city attorney would still have review of all the documentations before they came to council. This is just so that we have an additional set of eyes and somebody that has an expertise in financial matters. Right. And this came up in part because our firm's not bond council, and it came up in right. connection with the bond issue. Just want to make sure we had, you know, good oversight. Absolutely. Okay. Anyone from the public? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open it to the public. You want to expound on that or you're good? Okay. Going back to the council. Motion to approve 3-4 is written. Second. 
Got a motion by Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Lyons, Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Lyons. Aye. Mr. Scotty. Aye. Mr. Blewer. Aye. And I vote aye. Mr. Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well now we're going on moving down to public hearing section four. Four dash one, public hearing resolutions 2019 slash 44, track 839 slash ordinance annexing and inclusion of the additional territories as zones 10 of pub, public fiscal year maintenance district number one and co confirming the diagram and assessment of the annual levy of fiscal year 2020 to 2021 to 2021 for the additional territories annexing to the include the zones 10 of public facilities maintenance district number one mr rivera Good evening, council. if you can okay here we go uh, on september 17 2019 the city council approved resolution 2019-38 a resolution of the City Council of the City of Lemoore with intention to annex and include additional territories of public facilities maintenance district, district number one in the City of Lemoore and levy and collect annual assessments in such annexed territory for fiscal year 2020 through 2021 and thereafter. Staff has confirmed <clears throat> that the ballots uh, have been sent out and, been, and have been returned by the property owners to the city. Votes will be tab tabulated tonight during the council meeting if the ballots submitted are not withdrawn in favor of the proposed annexation um, exceed the assessment ballots submitted and not withdrawn in, uh, in opposition, then the added territory may be included in the PFMD zone number one, PFMD number one, zone 10, mm. and there are 36 homes uh, within this track. The maximum assessment of $497 will be applied on an annual per lot basis, beginning in fiscal year 2020-20 to through 2021, and will be applied to each lot within the newly added territory. It is anticipated that approximately $17,892 will be collected annually to maintain the road, sidewalks, street lights, and landscaping. Um, I have, um, uh, if there's any questions, uh, Regarding this, no. Council, you got any questions? I, any questions? I was just wondering, where, uh, was that an estimate of the requirements for the maintenance of the lighting, landscape, and maintenance? I have Jim McGuire. He's actually the yes. I, he can probably better answer that. But so seventeen thousand is going to cover the annual cost, then? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, yes, it will. Yeah. I got a question for you. Is I, I, I'm sure that's in there. I just didn't see it. But is there an inflator that kind of? Yes, we make sure that we put inflators in all of the all moving forward now and anything that we we move forward with. Yes, yeah, to yes. avoid the current problems. Yes, 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 sir. And that costing also includes the usage of water. Correct? Estimated. Yes, it does for the year. Okay. Yes. For irrigation. Let's start counting. Okay. Any, anyone else? <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and open it to public. Close the council for a minute. You're opening the public hearing. Yeah, public hearing. <coughs> Tom Reed, 1060 Park Avenue, a little bit more. Uh, just two things. One, uh, where is this property located? And how does the annual assessment for this property compare with the annual assessments for other uh, districts? Thank you. So this property is located um, in the self-help track. So it would be over there on Iona, north of Iona, over there, Tom, south of town. What's the cross street? Vine? Yeah, it is Vine, yeah, Vine, Vine, Vine and south of Iona, yes. It's, adjacant to the self-help subdivision. Mm -hmm. It's it's the back half of that, that subdivision. And um, you asked about how does it compare with other districts. Each district in itself is assessed based on what the district involves so you can't really compare district to district unless they had identical housing roadways landscaping so um this being a pfmd will be a well-funded neighborhood and should look as such should will 
Thanks, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to remember that if the property owners, oh, Still open to the public. Okay. No. Anybody else? Can I close the public hearing? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and give it back to the council. Go ahead now. Uh, I think it's important to remember that if they don't approve by vote, they're not going to get assessed. If they don't get assessed, then the property is going to be subject to being maintained out of the general fund, and that could be as much as 17000 so it goes to the property owners if they agree to it, and if they don't agree to it, then it goes back to the city. And uh, uh, that's, that's that's what they're voting for. So, additionally, on that part part of annexing into a lighting landscape mm -hmm. maintenance district or public facilities maintenance district is a condition of the development. So, um, should this not pass by vote? you could essentially stop the build of the whole subdivision to avoid the city having to pay annually to maintain it. It's, it's a condition of the, the subdivision that they pass this. Anyone else? Did you already closed the public hearing. <clears throat> no. Okay. Can I go ahead and get a motion? At this point, yeah, we have we need to, have to vote. Uh, uh, we need to open up ballots. Count okay. ballots. We need to count ballots and see if it passes. Okay. Could could we go on to the next item pending mm -hmm. the vote count and come yeah, back? Absolutely. We can. You can table this item to the end of the agenda for the vote count. Okay. I'll make we motion. table. Move we table this to the next item. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. Moving on to 4 2 public hearing resolutions 2019 slash 45, <laughs> adopting the initial study on mitigating negative decoration, adopting the mitigation monitoring the reporting program and decorating the filing of the notice of determination. Rivera? Then I will have a few things that are that are all tied to the TTHM um, water project. Um, the city of Lemoore in coordination with Alice, LSA prepared and published a notice of intent to adopt a mitigated ne negative declaration, also called MND, to address environmental issues associated with the city's addition of two water treatment plants, setting the public hearing for November 5th, which is tonight. The public review period began September 30th, 2019, and ended on October 30th, 2019. The city received no public comments during the review period. The proposed project would include the construction of, of new water treatment plants, uh, which is which are Station 7, which is located across from West Hills, and Station 11, which is at the intersection of Glendale and Lamore Avenue. And they are added at two existing well sites. Um, which are well sites 7 and well sites 11. To comply with the water, to comply with the Department of Water compliance, in order for us to comply with our our uh, compliance order that was issued by the Department of Drinking Water, <clears throat> the city sent notifications of the project certified mail also to the Tachioku Tribe and the Tule River Tribe on September 19, September 9, 2019, and received no request for consultation. The potential impacts and mitigated measures for this project are only construction related. So whatever, you know, that may come about through the construction process that we may encounter at that point, we would have to deal with them. But as of now, as of now, there is nothing that has been found. Um, so um, at this time, I do have um, Amy Fisher with us <coughs> say if you have any questions about the uh, CEQA study. She can 
she or I can answer any questions that you may have. It was pretty clear in that packet you gave us. Very clear. Whoever did that sequel study did a good job. <laughs> They're not easy to do. Good job. One of the questions I had, though, you know, if I could just add, I didn't see where it was coming out of an enterprise fund. Is it coming out of an enterprise fund or grant or how is that? This is this is coming out of CIP, right? Yeah, it's coming out of the CIP for the the uh, TTHM water treatment projects. Bonded. This is part of the thirty million dollar bond the city went and and received. So, um, matter of fact, we just made our first bond payment. So, okay. Yep it's it's not general fund dollars. It's 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 general or it's um bond money that's tied and supported through the water fees that are paid by the residents of the city. So the bond will be paid back by enterprise funds. Yes, by the water, the water, uh, with the water account. And this makes us all compliant, which should make us compliant for the state, it makes our drinking water better. So when we turn on our taps, we don't get all of the nasty stuff that comes out of it. At the, Absolutely. Yep, yep, just good for us, so. Until they change the standard. <laughs> Easy. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> we'll be through this right <laughs> when, when we complete the program. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Anyone else on the council want to expound on this? Come on ahead. Open it to the public. We are opening the public hearing. Public hearing. I did. Okay. Nobody from public hearing? Okay, close them to the public. Bring it back to the council. Yeah, can you close the public hearing? Close the public hearing. Make a motion to approve 4-2. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Scotty. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Scotty? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. Mr. Plewart? Aye. And I vote aye. What's the carriage? Are we ready? Did you tap? Okay, we're going to go back to... 4-1? You can bring it back. Yep. I'm bringing back 4-1. So the report for the ballots is $14,413, voting yes and no for $497. And passes. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, motion to approve the resolution. Now I'm going to make a motion to approve the resolution. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution. I've got a motion by Mr. Scotty. Second. A second by Mr. Lyons. Mr. Scotty. Aye. Mr. Lyons. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Plewart. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion okay. mm -hmm. Going on to 4-3 public hearing project development agreement in cannabis regulatory permit between the city of Lemoore and Tom Voorhees and Wolasana Partners, LLC. Olson. So good evening again, mayor and council members. Um, bringing back another cannabis um, project regulatory permit for your approval this evening. Um, ordinance 2019-03 went into effect August 2nd of 2019. Um, Wolasana Partners uh, with Tom Voorhees and the city of Lemoore. They would like to um, they put in for a micro business, which would include cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and delivery out of 14 acres on the um, industrial park. Now, you're probably familiar with the Voorhees project that has been around for many years that was kind of at a stall. Um, they have partnered. Um, I was out there on site today. There's dirt moving. There's infrastructure going in. There's fences up. Um, so they're working diligently of the 14 acres out there that's under this agreement, four to five acres of it will be under cultivation. The rest will be for other types of businesses that they're here in the crowd. If somebody would like to ask them, I'll, I'll let them talk about it. But a couple of the highlights is just on the, um, the proposed fees in the agreement the city is looking at about $202,000 a year just for the cultivation fees on the uh, the four acres or so that they're planning to do in cultivation. That does not include 
anything on the pro forma for distribution, which the city would get 1% of all distribution. And distribution is basically the transfer of cannabis from one licensee to another licensee. So um, selling to dispensaries, et cetera. Um, the city would get 1% of that. And then on the delivery out of Lemoore, all deliveries they make, the city would make 5% on deliveries. So, um, but at the bare bones minimum, it's 202,500 plus distribution um, plus delivery. So kind of put that in perspective with a current sales tax to generate $200,000 to the general fund, you'd have to have a business selling $20 million worth of product taxable per year for the city to get that 200,000. Um, it's fun to watch things move out there. You know, it started out with the, the property to the south and now to fill that whole corner. So um, we're growing and um, city, I truly believe that. Um, if I thought it was detrimental to anybody or to my kids go to school here, um, I wouldn't be here pushing for it. Um, reputable people, we made sure that in these agreements that we had reputable people to deal with. And uh, like I said, they're here to answer any questions, but I'm here to ask you tonight to go ahead and authorize and approve the project development agreement and regulatory permits. We can issue it to West Sona Partners. Thank you. So one question I have, is there room for expansion if they choose to expand in that area or do they have to go outside that industrial park area? So in my conversation with them this evening, they're going to start out with the there is room for expansion there. Um, they can explain it much better, but if you're familiar with like the Bravo Farms type thing over there and um, then out there in the industrial, I'll, I'll let them answer those, those details. And I, and I should add that because this isn't like a dispensary in a building existing, everything they do, because they're on, they're on flat ground right now. So everything goes through the, the proper protocol through the planning commission. They'll review the elevations. They'll approve the projects, give the recommendation to council them, the go, they can get after it. So buildings, all that stuff. So they, this doesn't give them a blank sheet, whatever they want. They still have to go through the proper channels. So will it be coming back after it goes through the planning commission or? Yeah. So anything, anytime they start developing the parcels and they'll have to submit their site plans and parcel maps and Judy and her team will go through it and, you know, we'll do all those reviews, but yeah, it'll be like anybody coming in to build, it'll come to council for an approval. Yep. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? No. I'm going to close it to the council and open it to, for public hearing. <coughs> Tom Reed, 1065, a little more. I just have one question, and just to, to be perfectly clear, they will not be selling directly to individuals, but only to other licensed dispensaries? Correct. So the way the micro business works through the, will be allowed to be in the state of California, as Lamore, California is the point of sale. Okay. So they can they can apps they can deliver to your home, Mr. Reed. Not that you would do that, but they could if you chose to, or they could deliver to Hanford, or they could go anywhere. But the point of sale would be the city of Lemoore, so we'll get the five percent. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Public hearing. I would. What I understood this question to be okay. is: there's not going to be an outlet store. <coughs> front on the got a motion by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Scoldy. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Scoldy? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. Mr. Fleur? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries. Okay, going down the new businesses, section five. <clears throat> five dash one reporting recommendations resolutions twenty nineteen slash forty six rectifying the award of bidding of construction <laughs> at the water treatment plant, Rivera. Becky, good evening again. This is kind of tied into 4-2. Uh, City Council held a public hearing this evening for the mitigated ne negative declaration and the mitigation mitigation monitoring pro uh, reporting program for the TTH, TTHM program. As the city has now adopted the MND 
and mitigation plan, this item is to ratify the award for the construction of the TTHM project. So in other words, we kind of had the cart before the horse, but now this makes it all, right, all correct. Any questions? No. Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and open to the public. See the public. Nobody want to expound on this? Okay, closing to the public, to council. I move we adopt uh, resolution 2019-46, ratifying the award of bid for construction for the or at the water treatment plant. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Pluitt, second by Mr. Lyons. Mr. Pluitt? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. Mr. Scotty? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. I vote aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 5 2 Report and Recommendations Resolution 2019-47, calling for a proposition 218 hearing regarding proposal refused rate adjustment. Ms. Champion. Uh, good evening, Council and Mayor. I uh, apologize for my voice, my story is it's allergies, and I'm sticking to it. Um, Yes. So on September 3rd, Mr. Bergman came before you and gave a um, brief presentation on where we were headed with our refuse rate study. Tonight, he is here to give a presentation on our draft results from the study and what we're looking to move forward with our Prop 218 hearing. So from here could, on, uh, you do me a favor. I, could you speak a little closer to the mic, please? It might not be the mic. It might be my voice. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> is that better? Yes. Um, <laughs> So previously, Mr. Bergman was here. He gave a presentation on our refuse rate study. We now have results from that study. He's here to do the final results or our proposed rates and ask for uh, approval from you to go forward with the Prop 218. So with that, I will hand it on over. Thank you, Amanda. Good evening, Mayor, mm -hmm. City Council. It's always good to be here in Lemoore. Um, as Amanda mentioned, I was here on September 3rd, two months have passed. I'm gonna talk about what we've accomplished since then. But the purpose tonight, just to be clear, is to present specific rates to you, which we send out to all residents and, and owners as a notice of the intent to raise rates. So you're not, you're not approving the increase tonight, you're just saying we basically support what we're sending out and then we'll be as much general information as I did when I was here in September, but I'm gonna cover the essential stuff. And so in the handout you have, you have the slides and then paper clipped in the back is the revenue expense workbook, which is important. And you can read that versus the one I'm going to show up here because you can see your handout. And then you also have the rate matrix for all the existing and proposed rates for refuse in the back. So those are the key, the two key documents. Um, in your council packet is a draft 218 notice. It needs a few modifications, but you can see um, basically what that looks like. It's one page of text. Attached to that one page of text will be the rate matrix. Okay. So leading up to when I was here last time, we had spent a lot of time on revenue expense. So that's the one spreadsheet that's in the back looking carefully at historic revenue and expenses, checking those against the city's audited statements, looking at the current expenses, the budget for fiscal 20, the year we're in, and then projecting forward what the expense level will be for refuse going forward over the next five years. And that is unchanged tonight. There have been no changes to that. Also introduced commercial recycle and organic rates, which you haven't had. We talked about that last time. Those rates are the same. Um, I've, I had done the cost of service analysis. How much does it really cost to provide different types of services for your customers? And there were a lot of adjustments in the rates because the rates were old. That was September 3rd. And so since September 3rd, and this was based a lot on comments, City Council, that you made when we were here before, we had um, customer meetings last week, actually, with College Park and Grove Apartments, two of the largest customers in the system, talking to them 
about what would happen with their dumpster service cost adjustments and 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 listening to them there was no strong response um, basically they were understanding they know this all costs money the big issue with the apartments is space for recycle and, and then organic containers and that's something that staff is working on we also did a customer survey that Amanda did using SurveyMonkey. And I'm going to talk about the results of that in just a minute. Very effective tool. The power of the internet is amazing. Um, what I didn't put in my slide here is that just last week, we had a customer meeting at the Veterans Hall. And Ed Rogers, you won't be surprised, was at that meeting. And I was amazed by two things that he said. I had to stop. Because at one point he said, I'm not here to oppose the rates. I'm actually here to support it because you need to do, you need to charge the right amount for your services. That was the first thing. And I just had to stop and say, really? And you know, he was serious. The second thing was he had actually ridden in a garbage truck for a half a day. And I said, you can do that. And he, <laughs> he had done that. So I'm glad to have met him. It was a pleasure that he was there. Absolutely. Um, since the last meeting, we have more options for residential rates. Right now, it's $23, and it's the um, black can every week, and then bi-weekly and the other two. And what I presented to you last time was the same thing for about $29, $29.90. I've come, we've come back with more options now around that. <clears throat> um, so there's also the new rate table in there. So the survey was very interesting. Um, Amanda did all of this. We worked on the questions together, five questions, and I'm going to take you through each of them. But it's inter interesting to see how people responded. Um, obviously, the internet rules, 154 coming through the city website, link to SurveyMonkey, 475 through the city's Facebook account, and just 12 paper responses. So we had a good response, 641 total. And here's what they look like. First of the five questions, how satisfied are you with the service? 3.8 out of five. Not bad, not great, but they don't hate us. I mean, we're doing, we're doing okay. Second question, Good job. how satisfied are you with bi-weekly blue and green service for recycle and organic? And most of the people like it, and there's just a small portion, around 50%, that um, would prefer to have every other week pickup. But generally, we can see there, the city is used to buy weekly service for blue and green. That's a good thing, because it saves everyone money. Question three, do you have an extra blue or green? And um, of those that do, um, help me out, Amanda, how do I, so, oh, so, I gotta review how to interpret this one. I, be, I believe this slide was just to point out how many people had the ex, the additional can. Right, so 12% of those that responded have green and 18% of those that responded have blue. I don't know why that was so hard, but this one's more informative. Would you pay a separate rate for extra containers? Yeah. Um, more said no than yes. And that's important because when we look at the options, um, basically I'm assuming that if we charge for that second container that people have now, that about half of them are gonna come back, which is okay, because we were giving people a choice, mm -hmm. that about half of those containers would come back. And the last question is, is one of basically balance. What do you value, value more, the cost of the service or the level of the service? And you can see that it's more weighted mm -hmm. towards cost of service. And that was the survey results, and it was very helpful. So a quick question, if, if, if you don't mind. On your question, it said, would you pay separate rate for extra containers? Do, you didn't give them an idea of how much more that rate would increase? Oh, it was, it was up to $3, Just an right? open-ended question. Yeah, up to $3. No. Up to $3? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good? Yes, sir. So here is the revenue expense that you have the handout for. This is what I showed you last time. And the main result of all of the work that's in this slide is that we need to increase revenue now 
overall, 30% overall, followed by those 3% increases for basically consumer for uh, inflation going forward. So from this global conclusion, then we go to rates to look at, okay, which rates do we increase 30%, more than 30%, less than 30%, and that's the entire exercise, the results of which you see in the rate table. And I'll talk a little bit about that as I move through this. Let me move through the presentation. If you want me to come back to this, I can. I covered it last time, but we can come back to it if I need to. The various components of mainly around expense, but I'll, I'll come back to it. Um, well, here are some of the, the highlights, again, that I covered last time, but it's important. Staff has increased from 12 to 14 to cover the workload. There were risk management costs assigned to refuse that, that weren't before. They were covered in the general fund or elsewhere, and now they're um, covered in a more fair way from refuse. Two trucks have been purchased this year or are going to be purchased <coughs> this year. Um, I mentioned the inflation factor. If nothing were done this year, the refuse enterprise will go backwards $417,000, which is a lot. I mentioned the two trucks. Uh, additional street sweeper will be bought in the next fiscal year and another replacement street sweeper in fiscal 23. Those street sweepers have so many moving parts and they take a beating and they're expen it's expensive to maintain the old ones. It's better to get new ones and people want street sweeping. So we have um, included that. The refuse enterprise is essentially behind on truck replacement. Trucks um, in an ideal world, you get seven years out of them. Now we're getting 10 years out of them. So the assumption based on the load, that the workload for the trucks for Lemoore is you need, they need to be replacing one truck a year to, to replace the trucks on a 10 year cycle, one truck a year. And that's in there now, the increase covers one truck a year. Um, this is just, just, just to show when you look across the bottom of the revenue expense, you see that the fund balance is being maintained over time. We're not eating into our reserves. We're maintaining our reserves in the refuse enterprise. Residential rates, um, unchanged since 2008, so it's been over 10 years. Lemoore's rates are relatively low, as you can see on the comparison chart when I get to it. Um, every other week service saves a lot of money, about 360 per customer per month. So here we get to the options, and this you didn't see last time. The one thing we came back to is 60 gallon service. The city has been in, in a mode of, of not um, allowing people to take out new 60 gallon containers, they've been switching them out. But what we realized is that if the city is to provide 60 gallon containers, they can um, encourage people to recycle more mm -hmm. because we really want our, our waste to go in, in the recycle not in the landfill. What we, always, what we also realized is that we can lower the cost for 60 gallon containers. And you can see that in, in the rate table, it's $2.25. $2.25 is the cost of the landfill between the 60 gallon mark and the 90 gallon mark. That's what that represents. And, the co and uh, yeah, that's just that. The other thing that we did that we had been talking that we had talked about so much, and it really came out of that last meeting and even leaving that night, is we all know that everyone's subsidizing those customers that have the extra containers. So doing the math, if, if half the containers come back, it's 25 cents. So when, if we uh, go to separate charges for recycling organics, everyone's rate can drop 25 cents from the 2990 that I showed you last time to 2965, I have a graphic here that I'll show you. And then those people that have the extra containers, $2 for recycle and $3 for organic. And that's the cost of the container, which is 50 cents a year when you amortize it over 10 years, plus the cost of the contents of the container. We, we tried to keep that as low as possible because the incremental cost for the truck to do one more tip is almost zero. So here's the graphic that illustrates it, starting at the um, $23, where we are right now, 
There's 29.90. And then 29.65 is 25 cents less to everyone. But then if they have a green container, they add the $3. If they add a blue container, it's two. If they have both, it's five. Everyone saves 25 cents, but those customers that have the extra containers would pay the extra two or $3. There are about 700 second green containers out and about 300 second blue containers out in the field. And I'm guessing that half of those would come back. And again, it's okay. It's okay. If, if we were to choose this, my recommendation would be to go this route. Um, it, it could be up to you. You could say, you know, it's not worth the 25 cents. Just make it 29.90 and don't go all th through all this, leave it as it is, mm -hmm. or we have an opportunity to save everyone else 25 cents. <laughs> Sir, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, it just dawned on me. Um, does this also include, because I know we're talking about street sweeping, does it also include the annual leaf pickup that we do, the city does, that we go around and we suck up everybody's leaves with that piece of equipment we have? Is that also, in, in this equation, or is that just an extra service that pulls out of the general fund? I can read Amanda's lips saying it's sewer. So it comes out of the sewer enterprise. Yeah, because it, it plugs up our storm sewers. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So it's sewer. So that there will still be there. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Here's the comparison. Um, using 2765 until 2790, it doesn't, 2965, it doesn't move where Lamore is in the comparison. And you saw that last time. Here's the combined utility bill. I didn't show you this last time, but it's a better um, visual for customers because your customers are paying for all three services. Sewer on the bottom at 2770, and then refuse with that initial bump upward to, in this case, 29.65. And then it's just 3% increases after that. You hardly see it on the bar chart. And obviously water is the big one. The water enterprise has the last of five incre increases on January 1st from the water rate study that was done five years ago. And then the water rate for a customer using 15,000 gallons, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same number I used for the rate for the water rate study. It's typical summer, 15,000 gallons or 2,000 cubic feet. So it's, it's more than the average. Going to commercial rates, again, I showed you this last time. Um, just some principles that go into the commercial rates that you see in the rate table. Um, the operating cost of the truck collecting commercial is a lot higher than the cost of the truck collecting residential because it can't pick up as many containers. So the cost per container for the pickups is a lot more. Larger bins, as I talked about last time, are much better because it's less expensive for the truck to come by twice. To come by once than to come by twice. It's better for the truck when it does its tip to pick up a bigger container. And then with regard to multiple pickups, the cost for the truck to come back the seven, second time is essentially twice the cost for one time because it's doing the same thing. So the, the way the rates are set is there's a point, there's a 5% discount as we go to multiple stops per week. It could have just been zero, but I put something in there because it's the same container. So you don't have to buy a separate dumpster. So there's some benefit there. This chart just illustrates the benefit of larger which is all the space in here. If it was a straight increase, it would be so much more for larger bins. And in the bottom, it's showing the KWRA cost, which is linear, because you have twice as much refuse in a two yard container, but the truck cost, which isn't linear. So as I mentioned at the outset, our purpose tonight is to ask you for approval and support to issue the notice. Um, we need 45 days to go by 
after those notices are issued. The intent is to issue the notices with the bills right at the beginning of December. Yes, that's correct. And um, with a rate hearing on January 21st, new rates can go into place on February 1st. Sir, question, uh, just so the public understands, on this type of 218 hearing, um, ex just briefly explain how it works. I mean, what is their vote? Because they're gonna get this in the mail. And, and how does the vote work? Well, the notice that customers and parcel owners will receive in the mail will state that there will be a rate increase. Mm -hmm. It'll make reference to the rate table. Yes, sir. There's a paragraph in the notice that just in general terms says why there's a rate increase, mm -hmm. but it will also make reference to the rate study, which I didn't mention because that's one of the next steps. The rate study will be um, the written study, which puts into writing everything I've done, will be available on the city's website. But what I'm, I guess what I'm just alluding to is, is that a, a no vote, uh, the only way they could, that a protest vote could happen, we, that because I want to be open on this with the people, sure. and I know everybody else does too. Um, the could you explain that? Yeah, I was taking too long to get there. <laughs> Sorry. No. So what it would take is um, fifty percent plus one of parcel owners to send in written vote protest in writing, making reference to the parcel or the address where they live um, on or before the rate hearing. Okay. Which is almost impossible. So they have to, they have to respond to it. That's, that's the thing they have yeah. in writing yes. respond to it. That's I just want to make sure it was. Thank in my you. experience with, with rate studies, that's the requirement of the law. Right. But what makes a difference to you folks is does this make sense? And, is it fair to, to the community? Yeah. And you know, that's. Oh, and I just, you know, <laughs> hey, and, and openness is great. So yeah. they, everybody understands because 218 hearings are different and it's according what you're dealing with. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and another question I would answer is, my recommendation is, is to go to the 25 cent discount. I'm interested in your comments, but, that's going to affect several hundred customers. So I didn't tell Amanda this yet, but what we're going to need to do is send all of them a letter directly to them that says our um, account shows that you have this service. Please know this is going to happen. It won't just be the 218 notice. We will help them out in that way. So I, I'm recommending that I'm not you, Nathan, but I'm recommending that you send a letter. Just and make sure that goes up before the, the 218 notice so they have it before they get it so they have the option at that time to turn their can in or yeah. keep it Ooh. yeah and the second issue from a practical standpoint is if there are a large number of customers that want to switch to 60s um, it's going to take your refuse department some time to get them so you could potentially give them the benefit of the rate before they get get, get the container because it'll be a cycle or two and from a good service standpoint, I, I would do that. Nathan's, anyway, it's a thought, it's a thought. So good communication, it always makes a huge difference. We tried to do that since we were here last time. You're doing great. And um, no surprises, people don't like surprises. And mm -hmm. That's always what I try to accomplish. And your staff has been great in that way. Anybody else? I'm going to go ahead and open to the public. Nobody's moving, I guess. There it is. Feet the film. I'm Ray 1060 Park in Limor. I just have one comment. Um, I have two green right now. And uh, most of the year, they stay in behind the fence. So, if I turn one in, and then I only need it certain times of the year, I say, hey, bring me out a second can. I need it for two months. And then I call and say, hey, pick it up. Can I do that? Thanks. I, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. 
because in all the time we spent brainstorming about how this works, that's one of the things we thought about because it's not intended to be as available service. So right now what's proposed is that in, in the uh, special fees, in fact, you can see it on the second page where there's the special fees, it's, um, I'm trying to remember where we left, where we left off. Is it $24 to switch it out more than once, once a year? Which brings up something else. When we come back to the rate hearing, you can't, this goes to a Prop 218 rule, you can't increase rates any more than you advise the public, but you can do it less. So, because that's fair. But the intent is that the service is continuous for the extra containers. And I know that's an issue because, I mean, I have a green tea container, everybody does, and you don't use it the whole time. You don't use it 12 months of the year. Um, other ideas we've heard is, you know, you can share with neighbors and you can pile, like I do at home, you can pile the stuff and sort of stage it into the green container. But it, the, the, but the intent isn't to be switching the containers out on what, demand. What was the cost for a second pickup? I forgot. For green, $3. For a second container, th $3. So 36 a year, right? Yeah. 12, 24, 36. I was just wondering what it would cost us to ask some batch guys to come do a second pickup in a day instead of having the second can. Well, there's a. F then you'd have to be home and load that thing back up. Yeah. But then, yeah, the issue with that is he's got to fill it up so you can get back to pick it up. Right. But we do have a rate for that. What is it? Um, yes. Or you guys can see it. I don't have the rate. Any more public comment? Any more public comment? It's, it's forty dollars for the oh that's commercial sorry ten bucks. Yeah, it's ten bucks. Automated, You're correct. Yeah, ten dollars. <throat> okay, well, bring it back to the council. Close the public hearing. Closing public hearing. No, yeah, it's it not a public, public hearing. hearing. This Just is new bring business. it back to council. Bring it back to council. Make so really, the question was: Is is it worthwhile to add another quarter, twenty five cents? Is that basically it? Keep it the way it is and add a quarter, or mm -hmm. well, or have people turn their cans in and save a quarter? That's yes, and to be clear, the way I've set it up presently, and the rate matrix you have, is we're saving the quarter which means everybody who has the extra containers will pay three or four dollars. The alternative is um, to leave it at the 29.65, the, the other rate, and everything stays the same. People that people can request con second containers when they want to. It's do the way you do make, it now. Do we have to make that decision tonight or can we just ratify uh, the authorization of staff to proceed with the uh, uh, issuance of notice of property uh, owners. If you want to leave it open, we should just simply put the 25 cent higher rate in the rate notice. And you could decide later. So instead of 25 65, it'd be tw tw instead of 29 65, it'd be 29 90. 90. Thank you. Okay. Which is minor. We could just do it that way. I like uh -huh. that. I like it. I agree. Okay. And we have to remember when we come back to the rate hearing to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> so if there's no... There's no other public comment, I already gave it back to the city council. So I, make a, I go ahead and make a motion then uh, to adopt the resolution 2019-47, authorizing staff to proceed with development and the issuance of a notice to property owners regarding a public <laughs> hearing on January 21st. That should be 2020, I guess, uh, to consider a refuse fee and uh, increase just because the staff report had a uh, wrong date in there. So I got a motion by Mr. Plewart. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Mr. Plewart. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Lyons. Aye. Mr. Scoldy. Aye. I vote aye. Mr. Kerry. 5-3.
Report and Recommendations Resolution 2019-48, redefining the memoranda of the understanding between the City of Lemoore and the Police Professional Service Bargaining Unit, PPSBU. Ms. Spear? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, on August 20th of this year, Council authorized the creation of a new bargaining unit, the Lamar Pro Police Professionals Services Bargaining Unit. Um, and as a requirement, we are required to have a memorandum of understanding with that new unit. We have been in negotiations both with um, between the city and that bargaining unit for the last couple of months. And so tonight we have their MOU before you. Um, the members of this unit came from a previous bargaining unit, and so we have at the direction of council, um, proposed a memorandum of understanding with that unit that is consistent with their current salary benefits and other elements of compensation. Um, and this MOU is set to expire on June 2020 to keep them consistent with the same schedule for all of the other bargaining units for the city. So tonight, since we finished that negotiation process, the bargaining unit has agreed and has taken a vote and, and has um, approve this memorandum. We just need an official action of council in order to make it official. Was that a unanimous vote? Or? It was. Before we make this move, I want to try to open it to the public, get their input on it. Anybody from the public? I see there's none. Okay, back to the council. <laughs> <laughs> Stop going. Make a motion to approve resolution 2019 TAC 48 as written. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Lyons. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. Mr. Scotty? Aye. Mr. Stewart? Aye. I vote aye. She carries. Thank you. Mr. Spears? Okay. Report and recommendations resolution 2019 49 affirming <coughs> the engagement of municipal advisor and bond council of potential insurance in water revenue bonds and soliciting solicitation of private placement proposal and preparation of related documents and taking related actions in the agreement between the city of Lemoore and RWG Law for Service. Ms. Spears. So after that very lengthy um, title, it's a little bit more simple than that. So basically, in March of 2019, the city was issued a $30 million bond for water projects. Those three water projects at the time were the TTHM project, which we've discussed twice this evening, as well as a tank for um, well seven and a new well 15. Um, at the time that we went out for the water bond, we did not have the official cost for the TTHM project. Um, at the time that we were going through the process, which was a very lengthy process, we assumed that project was going to cost anywhere between 20 and 24 million. Um, as you know, because you've authorized the contract, that project came in at $34 million. So the $30 million bond no longer supports the cost of all three water projects. The TTHM project is a requirement by the state. We have to do that in order to be compliant. Well, 15, we've already started, but we are now at a point where we have stayed that project because we need to make sure that we have funding to complete it. Um, and then well, the tank seven upgrades, I believe, have already been completed. So this contract that you have before you this evening is in a resolution for a contract between us and RWG Law, who was our previous bond council, to partner with us in an attempt to find additional revenues. We are looking at revenues um, that are bond revenues. There's different types of bonds that you can go out for. The first one that we did was not considered a direct placement, which means we had to go through all these really fancy long processes. But due to the value of this bond, direct placement might be an option. But we have to have a municipal advisor and bond council help us through that project, um, not only because we don't have the internal expertise, but because our current bond has specific limitations on how much we can go after an additional debt. So we want to make sure that whatever we do is compliant with our existing $30 million dollar bond. Um, so tonight, this agreement that you would sign um, is for the cost of up to, I believe, $58,500 for them to provide the service. Um, there is a budget amendment attached to this to take the money from water reserves, but just know that in most cases, those fees are covered under the cost of the bond. How many different types of bonds they are? I don't uh, know. That's why we have bond council. 
<laughs> I honestly don't know the answer to that. Tons. As a city, as we as a city, you know, I, you know, we, we, we definitely have to fix this problem, but, um, is there any, I mean, you know, we always try to look for grants. We try to look for things of that nature. I don't know, um, if there's anything out there that we have, we looked at those avenues yet, uh, you know, maybe with Chris calm or somebody of that nature, do some research to find out if there is any things out there, you know, uh, or is that pretty well exhausted? And we have partnered with Chris calm. They have gone out and looked for grants for us so far. It has been it's fruitless. Um, we've also assessed our current um, reserve fund balances to right. see if there was some way for us to do it with, with loaning money to ourselves between funds. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have the bandwidth. You've there. done your due diligence. Yeah. We don't have the bandwidth there right. to support that. Yeah. So no, thank you. Good job. Okay. okay. With the bonds, our finances, they don't want to go and look for the bonds. Who, who, who does the bonds for us? So this particular firm, the law firm, our bond council helps draft the document in partnership with our municipal advisor. So Del Rio Advisors, it was the municipal advisor for us on the first bond. Our contract with him is actually still good, which is why it's not presented to you here tonight. Um, it would be the same team as we had before. So they prepare all of the documents. They partner with finance staff and the city manager to make sure we're giving them accurate financial data on our current information. Um, and then they compare that to the restrictions in the existing bond to make sure that we're not violating any laws or that we haven't overextended ourselves to the point that we can't support a payment. Okay. So they, they tell you what bonds are out there? Then. Yes, they go okay, out and shop the bonds right. for us, yes. Okay. How's it going? They can't start until you ratify this contract. Okay, okay I'm going to open it to the public. Anybody from the public want to speak on this? I'm going to give you some time, Mr. Reed. I see you looking at me. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Well, since you pointed, I guess I'm obligated. I just want to know if uh, there is some connection uh, for the RWG Law Services with the previous item that we approved tonight for not more than ten thousand dollars. Thank you. I should have anticipated that one. <laughs> um, so the answer to that question is no. This contract that you were discussing right now is exclusively for these additional bond funds. Um, there was another item brought to council several weeks ago by another department that had to do with bonds for another reason. And so those are the types of issues that we need to have special counsel for. Um, mm -hmm. So this particular contract is for water bond only. And if there's any other issues that come up that are financial in nature or have to do with any other bond that the city may already have, um, that would fall to their other contract for special services. And do the increase, you know, cause there's what the uh, $4 million in difference, right? Between bond one and this, well, you said it, we had the original bond, 30 million, yes. 30 million. And then this is for the additional we that's because you said we had well 15 on hold we're looking for approximately five to six million dollars so okay. we're waiting for some of our um our fiscal year 19 audit to kind of start and see where we're ending and for not last that year, estimate we so we have an engineered estimate of what the additional cost is going to be or was that just the estimate that came from when we send it out for our FP. No, so you, when you awarded the contract to Falance for the TTHM project, it was a gross maximum price right. of thirty-four million dollars. Right. So we are assuming worst case scenario right. because we need to make sure, sure we have the money there for that. Um, we also have an approximate value of what we know it will cost in order to complete well fifteen. But you also have to know that we've also spent down some of that thirty million dollars right. because we're several million dollars into these projects already. So there isn't thirty million dollars still left. Well, I, I understand that. I understand, and you know we're pulling. We was going to pull three projects from it. Now we're only pulling two projects. And then there's, yeah, you know, I understand it. This increase, if we are able to secure additional funding, will be to complete all three projects. So I'm all sorry three. if I didn't make that clear. Yes, oh, we only right. have well um, 15 on hold currently because we right. know we don't have enough funding to support all three projects. But today. we got enough to complete two, and then we had money left over, but we don't have enough to complete the third project. So we're looking for additional funding to make sure we can right. conclusively complete them. I didn't want to interrupt. Back to, uh, I closed the comments for public, mm -hmm. back, back to council. Um, for instance, now we have grants and we have bonds. We don't have to pay back the grants, but we have to pay back the bonds. Anything to do with grants that we can use 
in this we have? No, and so that's what I was explaining. We've worked with Chriscom to try to see if we could get some funding, not even just through grants, but through lobbying at the state level. And so far, we have not succeeded in that. Um, and every grant has different parameters. Some of them mm -hmm. do have a match requirement. So not all grants are free, whereas you might have okay. not have to pay them back. You might still have a, a participating okay. value. Um, but we have not heard of any grants that we can use for water for these specific projects. Yeah, and we, as you stated earlier, you've already done that. Yeah. You've already done right. your due diligence. We, we've also reached out and um, have provided white papers to our, our elected local officials, mm -hmm. state and federal. So they've been working on funding sources. That work is still ongoing, but as of right now, it, it's in process. So we're not counting on those funds. But so we, we haven't given up the fight to go find revenues. We're still looking at them. But we're, we're moving forward as if we may not get those because without earmarks, it's tough to get this funding. Right, because the longer we, longer we, 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 we don't do this, the, the cost of construction is going to go up. Mm -hmm. That, and we're under a requirement by the state to complete by a specific yeah, date. Yeah, then we so get an NLB kind of and we time. get, right. yeah, we get fined and, yeah, notice a violation. Okay. Council, any more expounding or you want to make a motion? I'll just make a motion. Okay. To uh, approve. Is that a motion by Mr. Brown? Second. Second. A draw. Okay. Second by Mr. Scotty. Mr. Brown? Mr. Aye. Mr. Scotty? Aye. Mr. Pluert? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. I vote aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. 5-5. Five Report and recommendations bid award TTHM section seven and eleven liquid oxygen LOX tanks equipment supply repair and maintenance Rivera. Good evening, Council. Um, as you know, this item is also tied to the TTH uh, project, and so I just kind of want to kind of explain why we why we had to go out to bid for uh, liquid oxygen. Uh, as you know, this project is a design build project, so we're kind of designing plans and implementing things. So. This was an important piece in order to uh, figure out a space for the liquid oxygen, which is part of the process of this water treatment. So we had to reach out early to get a bid for liquid oxygen so we can get their actual plans so that we can, um, we can introduce their footprint into our entire treatment plant. So um, we did go out to bid. Um, we only received one bid, um, but we feel that the bid is within our engineer's estimate. So we think it's a good number. So, um, you know, we're just asking that council, you know, approve the bid so that we can move forward. I'm gonna open it to the public before we make that public. Okay, back to council. I have a question on uh, liquid oxygen uh, with you know, most of the people in the that have been in the military and around liquid oxygen and uh, the in the vicinity of any hydrocarbons like oil or fuel or grease or whatever, it it's uh, becomes volatile. So, is there a training program where people are going to get trained on how to handle a hydrocarbon and uh, liquid oxygen? Yes, definitely. Training will be. Um, a part of the, you know, the uh, the operational uh, before uh, the plan is an operation. We'll make sure that everybody's trained. Um, Mr. Brown also wanted us to get a hold of fire department. Let us know, let them know what we have, what uh, what material we have at the site, so they know, you know, how to how to treat the 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 the, the call or whatever. So yes, I mean uh, a, a greasy rag and you know underneath a liquid oxygen cart is. Uh, explosive yeah, yeah. so uh, I don't know. no exactly you know and and that's things that you know i think you're looking at is is make sure that when you do the, do the construction there's no asphalt roads around it things of that nature stand back you know you know break out the nfpa and you know go by the regulation but um yeah just training yes, training 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 and make sure everybody's safe and but it's it's transported all around through all the U.S. and stuff, and it's pretty safe as long as you don't go over and do go crazy, you know. Yes. Yeah. 
If we're ready for motion. Oh, can I get one? I'll, I'll make it. I move that uh, we approve the bid for the LOX tank equipment and systems installed in two city wells per bid specifications to <clears throat> Metheson, Metheson Tri Gas Inc. and authorize the city manager to sign the contract. Got a motion by Mr. Plewart. Can I get a second? Second. Got a second, Mr. Lyons. Mr. Plewart? Aye. Mr. Lyons? Aye. Mr. Scoldy? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Okay. May Mayor Neal, if you would afford the luxury, I missed uh, Fire Chief German for department reports. Absolutely. And I had one other thing I need consensus on as well. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Bruce. That <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, it does. Our meeting starts at 7.30 on Tuesday night, just like your guys do, yes. so it just takes me a while to get over here. This is my report for uh, the month of October. We had five, five monthly meetings of drills. We had 36 fire calls. We had 138 EMT calls. Training miscellaneous was 12 calls. Gave us a monthly total of 191. Uh, Year-to-date meetings and drills, we've had 44. Year-to-date fire calls, 325. Year-to-date EMT calls, 1,308. Year-to-date training and miscellaneous is 47. For a year-to-date total of 1,724. Last year, we ended up at 1,000, I believe it was 1,824 calls. So we're on schedule to... Uh, be probably real close to 1900 at the end of this year and that's it questions comments that 1308 that was in how many months that is uh 10 months that's 10 months yeah what you guys is average for a year well that's uh we gain 50 to 75 calls every year and uh that's what i'm saying right now we're saying it 1724 last year we ended up about 1820 1825 wow so okay. we'll like i said we'll uh we've got these two full months as you can see this monthly total for october was 191 so basically that's 200 calls so if we get 200 calls and 200 calls we're at 400 my math isn't very well that's that puts us over 2000 instead of 1900. wow so okay. Thank you guys for your hard work. You bet. Service, yes. Really do. We're proud of what we do for the city. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good job. Thank Hard you. Team. And then, and I forgot a couple Thank items, and, and, and these are these are you're going to be glad you stuck around for these. But your city council pictures. Now that we've got other things going on over there, we were proposing to put them in the foyer out here. Uh, <laughs> any issues with your pictures being hung out here? <laughs> Good. Okay, just checking. Yeah, and then it's not a post take, office, so we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mine gets out of the bathroom finally. Yeah. <laughs> Pest control. It's actually on the back of Michelle's door. Right now. Um, and then uh, the mailboxes. Um, staff would just like to start putting mail back here in the in the closed session room. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. And then this is actually the one I, I forgot. She reminded me of the other two. But on 12 3, we have a council meeting scheduled. Um, with the holidays, it's going to be real tight getting agendas to you in a timely manner. At currently talking to department heads, nobody has really anything for that meeting. So I'm asking if council would consider to forego and not hold a meeting on 12 3. We had a pretty real heavy agenda tonight. We're coming back again with some more stuff at, at uh, the second meeting of this month. So if we need a special meeting, you can always work that out. Yeah, I don't anticipate one, but absolutely. So I, I'm looking for consensus to cancel the 12-3 council meeting. Okay. Yeah, I wonder why this meeting was so heavy. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get out of <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do I got a consensus from everyone? Yeah. Looks like it. Everybody's going okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. And, and I'd like to point out, we had a heavy agenda tonight. And, and I appreciate the fact that we're going to get home to our families at a decent hour. So thank you for getting through it. Seriously. Thank you, Council. Well, thank you. Okay. My picture wasn't in the bathroom. I was just <laughs> <laughs> okay, Council report. Um, 
just want to say um, our city has gone through a lot in the past year and a half. Um, you know, we talked about it today. Don't have a lot of words to, I don't have the right words to say about it, but I just want to say that this city and the people of Lemoore and the people of the police department, fire department, everybody, the city, everybody rallied together what I've seen in support of, 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 of the families, the, you know, uh, uh, Ed Rogers and, 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 and Officer Di, uh, Diaz, is, I, I'll tear up his name. Diaz. He, Diaz, yeah. He used to laugh at me when I said that anyway. And, and, and you know, we have that run this, this Saturday for Officer Giles. Um, and the other things we had to go through as a community. But, you know, we as a community, I mean, we, we, we stand fast and, you know, we, you know, um, we were there for each other and that's what makes Lamore great. You know, um, just look at our nonprofits, all the nonprofits, what they do for our city. You know, we talked about the Lamore volunteer fire department. They save our city $2 million a year. You know, our police department's top notch, you know, um, you know, public where everybody, you know, we all work together, you know, we might have our differences, but at the end of the day, we still care for each other. I, I, I just personally just think that's pretty darn great, you know? Um, so that's, that's, that's all I got to say. No, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Councilman Lyons. So, yeah, I'd like to start off by uh, saying to the police department and uh, the Diaz family that, you know, I'm really sorry for you guys' loss. Uh, I'd also like to say condolences to the Avalos family, to the Vega family, Rogers family, and the Trujillo family. Um, kind of to piggyback off of what Mr. Brown over here said that, yeah, we've our town's been through a lot in the last year and a half or so. It's, But, I mean, he'll only give you what you can handle. And uh, I feel like we've handled it. We've yeah, persevered. That's right. And we're standing here smiling regardless yep. but uh aside from that um i attended kcao on october 16th and the aging on the 17th both had normal business nothing special to report and uh that's all i have thank you sir uh, <clears throat> i'd like to kind of do the you know kind of same thing uh, officer diaz's family uh ed rogers family uh, my thoughts and prayers are out with them. Um, I can't imagine what they're feeling. Um, but to kind of talk what they're talking about, we're, we're a resilient town. We, we bounce back from adversity. And, um, you know, when, when bad things happen, people step up. And, and that's one of the beautiful things about, about living in a small town where you're walking through the grocery store and you see people or, you, you know, wherever you might be, it's like cheers, man. People know your name and, and it's kind of cool. So um, thank people for that. Um, a reminder, uh, the Veterans Day Parade's 11-11. It's Monday. Um, we're a town with the, with the Navy base and we should be proud of the men and women that have served our, our country and continue to serve our country. And I, I've been involved with it through couple of different places, including the fire department. And I would love to see more people out there um, supporting our veterans. So if you have time on Monday evening, come on out and, and support those who fought for for us. What time is it? Well, yes, I'm sorry. The, the parade? Seven o'clock. Oh, Six p.m., yes. Downtown as well. Okay. So thank you very much. I'd like to uh, say that I knew Edward Rogers and uh, Jonathan Diaz very, very, I wouldn't say very well, but if you knew them at all, they'd give you the shirt off their back. Even if you didn't know them, they would help you. So both of them, uh, they're going to be missed. And uh, I can just echo what the rest of the council members said. It's, it's, 
one of those things that you have to deal with in life. Uh, you're born and you die. And unfortunately, some people leave early. And uh, the last thing, I, or the second thing I wanted to talk about is on the, sec on the first Tuesday of November next year, which is a year from today, there's going to be an election. And uh, for the members of the council, the seat is up, for, up on the election block. So some of the council members uh, uh, may choose not to run, and and uh, it could be that if we're all voted out of office, that's what the public chooses to do. Well, I hope uh, that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> I know that's a selfish comment that you made. But uh, I'm just saying to the public that if you want to do a public service, this is a good opportunity to run for office because there's a lot of uh, a lot of things to do. This this last uh, what I've been on since the 20th of August, and I think there's been uh, from last year more of a, a functional city council than there was last year this time. So. Mm -hmm. I congratulate the council for coming together, working hard on their issues and uh, not being afraid to voice what they feel. And I think we all work together as a team and and people don't necessarily agree with everything that we do on the council. And uh, uh, for those that, that do uh, and for those that don't, I, I respect their opinion. And so let us know if you don't think we're doing what you would like us to do, and we'll we'll listen. And uh, once again, a year from today, there's going to be election, and uh, I'll move it on to the mayor. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I just want to say I want to piggyback off of Dave Brown as well. Uh, I got the phone calls, and when the city manager called me and told me about the first one, I was like, "Wow!" I just couldn't believe it. I heard about Ed Rogers. I can see him up here just calm and giving me a hard time all the time, just sitting right here. Hey, where, where you? Where, where's your hat? What kind of hat are you going to wear today? Just, he just screamed out something. He was just a character. He was always 11 and always involved with the council, although he was on a planning, department, planning commission. Um, yes, um, we lost a law officer, and it shocked me to hear what happened to him and praying for his family as well, praying for it praying for Lamar. We're going through something, but to see this council, the way we all intertwine with each other and it's all positive and stuff, it means a lot to me, how we're all working together as one, you know, and, and I just want to let you guys know, I had a great time. I went to uh, the League of Cities and the one that you fought for, <laughs> the things, uh, about the, the city validation. The city manager had a different of opinion with me. And, right. and then Mr. Reed came in. Well, anyway, uh, that resolution uh, was not even on vote. They they discontinued that one, but they did vote on the firefighters, and I voted on that. Um, they also had, um, I'm reading it right now, SP 1300, SB 1300, SB 1343, and this all had to do with different seminars I was going to about the hemp, about whenever something big comes in, it's going to be, it's going to flow in the city and it's going to be a lot of people that lose money because they think they're going to make a bang, buck, but they are, they got so much opponents that they're going against. It's kind of like foot locking and foot action. You don't know which ones then this knocks the other person out. So, we're going to have to be dealing with a lot of that, cleaning it up, what they leave behind. And so they said, take notice of that. Um, we also had something to do with um, prevent ourselves from getting into so many lawsuits. And they had um, a seminar on that. And then I heard about the temp service. If any, and I don't know if you can recall on this, anybody anybody's on the temp service that is working with you guys, they cannot sue. They got something in place for that. So it's a lot of things I didn't know. And I got to show you a lot of these things. I got pamphlets I'm going to give to you. And we'll sit back and talk about them. Now, with the skate park, I'm almost done, guys. With the skate park, <laughs> I don't want to talk your ears off. With the skate park, um, 
I found out we might not have to move it. But I went and I, we, I went to this extravaganza, you know how they have that big Expo. booth, Expo. And they had some turf to hardwood floor skate parks that were cheaper than, uh, than asphalt concrete. And it was just phenomenal from BMX. Um, they also had another place that did parks instead of going to work out. God bless you. Instead of working out and in, instead of working out at a gym, they have parks that they are, they are putting workout material in. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, the way they have it, you've seen that. And so I bring them up too. So maybe that can help you guys out on people who wants to work out for a living. Instead of walking, it gets boring walking around that park sometime. You might want to walk on one of them stair, uh, they got like little artificial stair masters that work just with your body. You push along with your body. And so I didn't know how they made it, but they had great ideas how to do it. So it's a lot of things that you put in place for not just the kids, uh, but for is for grownups as well to keep the kids occupied. They had little things for like a, a nursery center that go around and they just had all kinds of different pamphlets. So I'm going to uh, present that and share that with you guys all together. But I had a great time. I thank you guys for everything you guys have done. I'm talking your ear off. God bless you guys. Stay positive. Much love. Adjourn. The time is now 9.15. <laughs>